What's going on, fam? We're back. The Garage Studio is open. Another episode of the Left Right Left podcast with your handsome host, yours truly, Mark R. Chabot, United States Marine Corps, retired. Hey, before we get started with the, my guest this evening, I just want to get her, welcome all my new subscribers, all my new viewers out there. To everybody that out here that follows the podcast, there's a lot of new content. Please make sure you go over the channel, scroll through that stuff. Remember, we are trying to raise donations for the Amphibious Assault Vehicle Memorial, and we're trying to close that deal out here before August so we can start building that beautiful memorial that is going to sit at Quantico, Virginia, and I'll be sitting in the front row excited to see that getting built. Without further ado, let's get started with tonight's guest. Um, let me set the table for everybody. I met this man at the Sergeant's Majors course, and I tell you, we just clicked. We got along really, really well. Um, and I th think he's a great guest for the podcast because, as you know, we try to teach lessons to people and try to get them to reach within themselves and find things and find that extra gear to motivate themselves. And I think this man is the right person to talk to you about an important topic tonight. But before we do that, for the first time, at least in social media domain on camera, I would like to introduce my great friend, Edward Drip, Dr. Parsons. Edward Drico Parsons, dissertation, a phenomenological study exploring the lived experiences of how male black combat specialty officers achieved personal and organizational career success in the U.S. military. Welcome to the podcast, brother. Left, right, left, here we go. Hey, Mark, thank you so much for the introduction. It's uh, wonderful. I don't have a huge social media footprint, so getting any time I get a chance to talk to anybody about leadership, particularly in this forum with a friend, somebody I know that is as born and bred for this thing, I'm always happy to do it, brother. Thanks for having me. Man, it's my honor to have you and to celebrate your monumental achievement on, a, on earning a doctorate, man, which so few, especially enlisted Marines, actually do. So before we get into the centerpiece of our topic, um, please talk a little bit about, you know, where you're from and where Young Drip was born and all that good stuff. Over to you. Hey, happy to do it. Um, born and raised in a small place in North in the mountains of North Carolina called Taylorsville. Um, population of about 2,000, whatever I was, one in 2,000 when I was growing up. Uh, lived there till roughly about the age of 16. And then uh, we moved, my family and I moved to Shelby, North Carolina. And from there, joined the Marine Corps. And the rest is what we would say history, man. Yeah, very good, sir. So tell me a little bit about your um, your mom and your dad, you know, about how they raised you and all that. Oh, <laughs> rough, hard but fair. Uh, <laughs> my dad was a uh, minister and truck driver, uh, jack of all trades. He, cut, he was a master barber. He was a professional radio announcer. He was a singer, songwriter. And my mom endured all of that and uh, took on the task of raising two boys, me and my brother. That's awesome, brother. Um, and your nickname is Drip. Drip. And I've been wanting to ask you for a while now exactly <laughs> where does that nickname Drip derive from? So uh, funny, funny enough uh, to for me that, you know, whenever I tell people my name is Drip, my full name is Edward Drico Parsons. People had a hard time calling me Drico. It was Dranko or some other rendition thereof. And um my grandmother, my, my paternal grandmother, uh, one day she said, you just drip, drip, drip from the mouth all the time. And so she called me silver lip drip. Over the years, silver lip drop, drip stuck. And uh, it became my call sign whenever I joined the Marine Corps. And then the rest is history, man. I feel it on that. You know, you know some smart-ass white guy like me, just assume, <laughs> I just assume it was slang, right? <laughs> I thought we were talking about clothing or something, but right. <laughs> thank you for providing that context. Uh, and I understand, um, you know, I'll tell the audience a little bit about your family now. Uh, so married to my high school sweetheart, Christina Parsons, Dr. Christina Parsons. Uh, she has her PhD also from North Carolina A&T University. Uh, we have four children. Uh, my daughter, Alicia, she's a captain down at 82nd Airborne Division right now. Uh, my oldest son, Gunner, as your oldest son, Major, he is a uh, first lieutenant in field artillery out of Fort Bliss. Uh, my son, Gunner, he is a 11 Bravo in the Army. Uh, just got out of, just left 82nd after four years. Uh, now he's with the Army National Guard going through college. 
to finish up his degree. And my youngest daughter, Elizabeth, she's down at Randolph College down in Lynchburg. Everybody, let's give a round of applause to Drip and his lovely bride, Christina. 29 years, been married. Woo! Yeah. Congratulations, man. That's a huge, that, that's a huge number, especially for somebody who spent as much time in the Marine Corps as you did. We know that divorce <laughs> rate is hovering right about 60%. So, <laughs> hey. They're about, and, and it's all, I owe, I owe Christina all the, the accolades and praise and, and honor there uh, because she understood she putting her career on pause for those years to allow me to go off and, and do the things that my heart desired with the Marine Corps. I couldn't have done it without her. Yeah, that's awesome, man. I'm glad that, you know, I'm glad everything's working out and everything. I think for um, purposes of our discussion as we move forward, I think it's important for you to sort of shape a little bit about the kind of student that you were when you were growing up. Can you talk a little bit about that? Absolutely. In a very short, I was a horrible student. Uh, the only thing I cared about was football, uh, football or basketball or whatever that was a uh, horrible student horrible student in high school. I uh, was a GT waiver, joined the Marine Corps. Uh, <laughs> imagine that. And did not take my academic piece as serious as I should should have. Uh, had it not been for my father's encouragement and my wife's encouragement uh, and a few other commanders, Omar Land, Chuck Ellis, uh, who were commanders of mine early on, I would have never thought about going to school at all beyond high school. We always need that encouragement, you know, from other people to give us that little bump forward, man. I'm glad you had some solid, you know, men and women in your life to do that. That's yeah. really good. Um, dude, 28 years in the Marine Corps. 28. 28. Infantryman, drill instructor, you know, you've been to, the, you know, all the, all the courses. You know, you saw Army Sergeant's Major. I'm sorry, Army. Yeah, Army Sergeant's Major Academy. You've been to and done out there and done it all. Air Wing, Sergeant Major, all that stuff. Took care of wounded warriors. There's not much that you didn't do out of all that time that you served, brother. Um, what would you say is the most memorable part of that journey? Uh, the most memorable part of the journey I, I would offer is um, probably when I was the uh, staff of CIC for the embedded training team that I took to Afghanistan with Afghan commandos. It, um, it was hard nosed. It was almost full on kinetic and it gave me a chance to exercise everything that I had learned about being an infantryman through, uh, over the years. Uh, it didn't matter what it was, call for fire, simple patrolling, offense, defense, you know, hasty ambush, complex assaults. It didn't matter. We I had a chance to do it all there and advise a partner nation, advise uh, forces to go out and fight for their lives and defend their, their, their own country. That, that was probably a turning point for me um, because I was out there alone and unafraid Well, outside of my team that I had with me. Miguel Goodpasture, who was a team OYC, um, Bill Torado, another great guy, Joe Denman, who was one of the captains that came from 1st Marine Division, uh, Jack Roma, uh, who's chief of staff, I think, in 3rd Mardia right now. All these guys, they, they were extremely, extremely competent, professional and we were constantly up in each other's game while we were out there. So that was that, that was probably a turning point. Yeah, what an opportunity, man. And I know Bill Torado personally, too. He's a really he's a wild man. Good, good, very great American. Um, but I understand I've seen I've seen those teams, you know, operate during some of my tours and stuff. And there's a lot of trust and confidence and that's in place in you. And um, I tell you, you it, the best part probably about that billet that I would say is when you actually see those forces that you are training go out there and fight and win. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's a huge deal. Dude, absolutely, man. Um, you know, Bill, Bill and I were, were thick as thieves, you know, Tim Lurkey, another, another guy, the, these guys extremely competent as infantry, infantry dudes. And to, you know, get a mission from higher headquarters and say, Hey, I need you to take your, you and him take this big company out and go fight them, you know, against whoever those guys did it. They were the best in the business, man best in the business to do it. Always good when you feel that way about the fellow Marines that are on your left and your right, man. That's uh, that's big. Um, I want to pivot a little bit, um, Drip, and talk to you a little bit about, actually have you sort of talk to us a little bit about education. I mean, like I said in the beginning, to earn a doctorate, you know, as an enlisted guy, I mean, you're, you're one of probably about a dozen 
men and women that I know that, that achieved a doctorate as an enlisted Marine. Um, can you talk a little bit about how your education got started and then sort of the journey along and kind of the hardships and all those things as you were being a fantastic SAR major on active duty? Uh, absolutely. Thanks, Mark, for the question. Uh, one of the, 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 the hurdles that I had to get over initially was, was my own hubris. You know, I had to get over myself. You know, I thought that being an infantry guy that I didn't need anything else. You know, hey, I'm starting Parsons, hear me roar. I'm, you know, Gunny, Staff Star, Staff Star and Gunny. And uh, my wife showed me that there's a whole nother world of thought beyond this. Um, I had commanders that took an interest in me learning and reading more. And so to, to answer your question, um, I, I started my wife and uh, Omar Land, who was company commander at the time, and Marine Barracks 8th and I encouraged me to take um, a history, history class, a psychology class, and a Spanish class, and an English class at uh, Prince George's Community College when I was stationed the first time. And during that time, I barely passed the history class. Um, the psychology class, the only reason why I passed that class is because I believe the professors ex-husband was a Marine, and she had an affinity for Marines. Uh, and I'll never forget, the my final presentation was uh, on the drill instructor from Full Metal Jacket and how drill instructors really change and influence uh, yeah. recruits' lives psychologically. Uh, probably the wrong clip for the movie to show during that class, but <laughs> yeah. I did anyway. <laughs> uh, the uh, Spanish class, uh, I remember the professor coming out and saying, Eduardo, you uh, are not going to pass my class. And just go ahead and sit out here for the exam, and I'll just come get your paper later. And I failed it. I failed Spanish all, all the way. Uh, and that was the, the catalyst of failing. Getting in that Spanish class was a punch in the mouth. The English class was a punch in the mouth uh, to my ego and to, to me holistically, and that I needed to get off my butt and really pay attention to if I wanted to be the leader that I thought that I was going to be, that I needed to know how to read and write better. It's like, but what gives, right? I mean, I, I went to school too on active duty, not to the extent that you did, but what gave for me was sleep. <laughs> uh, that was my experience. Like, I, I slept less and I studied more and I was up, you know, that, that was my time because, you know, you can't, you can't budge on the Marine Corps duties and responsibilities. You can't let your Marine stuff slip just because you're in school, what was kind of like your struggle, you know, as you were going through this process all the way up to a doctorate? The, uh, believe it or not, what it was the constant chatter in the background of, Hey, if you're doing all that college stuff, when are you taking care of your Marines? And those same individuals that, that were, were bumping that sort of noise didn't see that, you know, I was the last man out the door at 2300 at work because I still had that stack of stuff on my desk. You know, a sergeant major, you got that stack that comes on just before the clerks leave that I was going through to make sure that my boss got the same level of advising and commitment and wherewithal from me. Despite my college, I would go home, kiss the wife, play with the kids, put them to bed, get up at zero two in the morning, go downstairs, write a paper, or start writing a paper, or do a discussion board post, or get whatever reading I needed to do out the door by 0530 at work to PT with the boys, and then kick off the day. It, it was rough, and I burned the candle at both ends. That's, isn't that the truth? Uh, that is a fact. Um, where did you start school at? So, um, as far as like a your the bachelor's degree. program, so stuff. bachelor's degree, yeah. I started with American Military University. Okay, uh, in 1997, 98, um, just before I went to drill field. So 98, 99 ish. Um, they were nationally accredited then; they weren't regionally accredited. Uh, and uh, Captain Brian Hallett was my platoon commander at the time, and uh, he said, "Hey, Parsons." Uh, you like you got some G2, you need to go to college, American Military University is it. General Gray is on the board of directors, have at it. I was a General Gray fan. If General Gray was leading the charge, then I felt like, screw it, it's a degree, right? General Gray's endorsing it. And that's how where I started at. And 10 years later, um, I have my bachelor's degree, 
I, whenever I went to the Army Sergeant's Major Academy, I finished my last class there. Uh, and that's where I started my master's, or I started initially started looking into my master's degree there. And where did you get your master's from? Uh, my master's is from Seton Hall Pirates, Seton Hall Pirates yeah, in yeah. South Orange, New Jersey. Basketball, baby. <laughs> Basketball through and through. Um, I took a chance. I, I applied to a couple schools. Seton Hall is one of them. I just I didn't selected for Sergeant Major uh, at the time around I was on my second deployment uh, with VMM 264. Uh, my boss was absolutely encouraging for me to apply, and I did. And I wrote the letter, did the interview, and then they gave me a call and said, hey, you got, we're going to accept you. And I said, well, hey, I'm about to deploy. And they said, okay. So I started looking internally, started looking, uh, start the, the beginnings of imposter syndrome. Should I really be taking a master's degree and going to deploy and things like that? She said, okay, all right, we'll work with you through it. Can you be here on this date to go through the, uh, the uh, new student uh, in syndrome uh, new indoctrination piece. I looked at my boss and he said, yeah. I said, matter of fact, you're going to go uh, permissive T TDY or TAD, permissive TAD. He said, because this is your development. Roger that. You know, big ups to Colin Brainerd for, for believing me to do that. Him and uh, Doug Sanders. Lesson. Lesson, lesson, lesson. Support your Marines. Support their goals. Support their dreams. Encourage them to do things. You can do more than two things at once. You can do other things besides be a Marine on active duty, and you can also be fantastic things in your personal life as well. Support your friends. Support your fellow Marines. If you're leading Marines, support them as well. All right. So it, it, most, most guys and gals, right, would be just be so happy to finish a bachelor's degree. A lot of us do that, right? Some do a master's program and then they'd be pretty happy with that. They'd be like, cool, I'm, I'm all set up here, right? Why, why a doctorate? And where did you go to school? Tie that all together for us. So, uh, why the, the, uh, a friend of mine, mentor of mine, uh, Chuck Ellis, uh, he told me whenever I finished my bachelor's degree, he positively said, hey, uh, now that you've done this, you've proved that you can do it. Now you need to take your butt to a formal brick and mortar school and get your master's. Kind of looked at him like, okay, you know, I really trust this guy. And he believed I could do it. And, um, and so I did finish with Seton Hall. My wife had enrolled and was finishing her PhD program. And, uh, our ability to communicate really just blossomed yeah. throughout that process my ability to analyze problems at work had was just on another level at that point. I could sit and talk with my boss and say, hey, whoever the boss is, we need to have a, a drip to whatever their name was conversation and really give provide them with a depth of analytical review and thought about things. Yeah. Their 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 return. So at that point I started seeing a return on investment for what yeah. I did really started doing in school. I wanted to know more about leadership. What, what was beyond JJ did Ty buckle and those 11 leadership principles. I wanted to know more than that. What else is out there? What else are we doing and teaching not only our enlisted force, but what are we teaching our officers about leadership? And so I started combing the internet through problem uh, for, for our programs. And then I had a heart attack. Uh, then I had a heart issue that caused me to go into the hospital. And while I was laying in hospital bed, I said to myself, this is a bucket list thing. This is a bucket list thing. And if nothing else before, if this is my last thing that I do, I'm going to do this. Hey, satisfying your internal happiness and those bones, right? <laughs> That's it. That, that, that matters, man. That really, really matters. I think that, um, you know, the fact that you did it and that you chose not an easy path to do it, but you chose a very challenging path to do it, you know, speaks a lot to your character and a lot for the example that you set for people. Cause again, you could have went anywhere, but you went to Creighton university. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's legit. That's real deal. Holyfield stuff right there. Yeah. You know, home, home of the, uh, the, the college world series in Omaha. Um, I didn't know anything about Creighton. I, I knew they were in, in the big East cause Seton Hall's big East fan. Uh, I looked at their program, and their program was centered on leadership, period, bottom line. 
It didn't go off into, you know, pedagogies. It didn't go off into business <laughs> acumen unless you wanted to follow those particular things. Uh, their interdisciplinary leadership program solely focused on leadership. And that was what I had always wanted to know. What is beyond, behind the veil with this leadership piece? And so um, I applied to one school and it was Creighton. And uh, they said yes. And I, I kind of looked at the, the email that, hey, I want to do an interview with you. It's like they got the right guy. They do realize that, you know, I, I'm not this, this academician. And, um, and it was a great journey, man. I would not trade that time at Creighton growing as a, uh, as a leader, growing more, more centrically as a person. Uh, and understanding what it was. I mean, beside the fact that General Zinni is, is a Creighton University alumni, you know, uh, and there's a couple, and I found through uh, some conversations that there, there's at least one other general officer in the Marine Corps that's going through that pro the same program that, I'm, that I just finished now. You know, so the, the proof is in the pudding as to what Creighton University does in its attraction to what it does to attract leaders to the program and what it puts out. You know, uh, these, these guys are at the top of their game, strategic thinkers, and they understand leadership from an internal and external level. And as whenever we look at leadership from the internal perspective, I see the benefit of education and why. If you ask Lance Corporal Parsons, 27 or now 30 years ago, what my thoughts on leadership was, and I say instant willingness of obedience to all orders. If you ask me now, I will tell you that leadership is the, is the complex meshing of internal and external environmental components that make you at every juncture and stage of your life who you are today. And when we look back at all the ranks that we have, and please, out there, young leaders, understand that every book that you read, every deployment that you go on, every letter that you write, everything that you do to build your mind helps your young leaders to develop themselves. Because if they don't see you doing it, they won't do it at all. Leadership by example is the most powerful example. Most powerful. And it's more than just running. Take the time to exercise your minds, exercise yep. your minds, exercise the mind challenge, you know, the old hash runs, you know, take, take a bag of books out and go for a three mile <laughs> run at every mile, stop and do a Kim's game, you know, have somebody write a quick order, have these things that you think are just weird, exercise their minds, sit down and have conversations about them, about politics. Don't be, don't, don't delve into the negative. How does that affect us in our wheelhouse to grow the Marine Corps, the Army, or the Navy? Those sorts of things.